Welcome to the Bambanani series. Every child has a right to quality education and teaching inclusively can contribute to achieving that goal. This series of videos illustrates how teachers are teaching inclusively in South African classrooms. The videos focus on teaching numeracy and literacy in the foundation and intermediate phases. To support participation and learning by all learners, the teachers in the clips differentiate their teaching methodologies, content and assessment strategies, and classroom environment. Let's join hands to teach every child. Um, my lesson went well. I taught my grade four was about 3D objects. Uh, I began with a bit of prior knowledge, a bit of revision. Uh, we spoke about the difference between 2D shapes and 3D objects. And we had a little exercise that I had them do where they sort out 2D shapes and 3D objects. We are going to be focusing on 3D objects. 3D objects. Before we get there, Mohammed. No, it's fine. Before we get there, I just want to take us a bit back. Nah? Okay, let's, so firstly, what are 2D shapes? Anissa? Ma'am, a 2D shape is a flat shape. So a 2D shape is a flat shape. What is a 3D object? A 3D object. Kate? A 3D object. It's a object where you can see all the sides. sides. Today we saw a wonderful lesson by Ms. Ramutibe on 3D objects. And I really liked the way that she introduced this lesson as she really started to draw on the learner's prior knowledge and amazingly integrated it into the new knowledge that she was teaching by, by getting learners to identify the differences between 2D shapes and 3D objects. So that was a really effective way of drawing on learners' previous knowledge. You are gonna, gonna, you're gonna take one thing from the board and one thing from here, and I want you to put it in the correct basket. Callan? One from the board and one from the table. Why, Kellen? Ma'am, I'm taking this one because it's flat and you can't see all the sides. And what shape is that, by the way? Pentagon. How do you know it's a pentagon? Can we see it? I can't even see. How do you know that it's a pentagon? Well done. And then the 3D object that you placed there, you said? So you can see all the sides and it's fat. fat. Well done. And then we spoke a bit about the properties of 3D objects, um, faces, whether they can roll or slide, the edges, um, the vertex, vertices. What is the name of our 3D object? Zayola? It's a rectangular prism. Then I'm going to go over and draw my rectangular prism as best as I can. Then I'll fill in the table which says number of faces. How do we count our faces? Can somebody count the faces for me of this? The teacher highlighted key mathematical vocabulary for this lesson and wrote this on the board. This is a visual reminder for the learners for some of the concepts that they learned in this lesson. We and then we put it into practice. So they each had like an object in front of in, in front of them on their tables, and in pairs they had to explore but the, the explore the three D object a bit. Ms. Ramatibe used a, a great learning strategy, and that is um, she used exploratory learning. So we found that um, Ms. Ramatibe gave a really wonderfully designed worksheet um, which had a lot of 
thought that went into it and she designed her lesson very well in that each learner got their own, or each pair of learners got their own 3D object. And they had to, um, without much prior instruction, explore the properties of these 3D objects. And I found that this is a really wonderful way of learning because learners are given a concrete object in which they can, they can really explore and, and find out the properties for themselves. And we find that when learners do this, there's a much higher chance of them remembering the properties and understanding what the properties are of a 3D object. Being the inclusive school that we are, uh, we usually have um, big classes. So a full class would be like 40 over 40 learners. And um, so it's like a pretty standard class. Um, usually you'd find that um, you'd want to Usually in, in, in circumstances like this you'd want to, like in an inclusive school, you want to group learners so that they can work in groups. But I've tried that before and because of the lack of space I have in my class, I find that pairing works. So one of the things I've, I've found works um, is when you pair um, a, a, a little bit of a, weak, a weaker learner and a, a stronger learner and you pair them together and it makes quite a, a, a nice combination but it's not just in terms of their academic abilities, personality as well. Okay, it says you have a number of vertices. So the number, so the vertices are the pointy parts of the shape. So we're going to count the number of the vertices, the pointy parts of the shape. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight vertices of the block. So we're going to write eight vertices. I really like the way that Ms. Ramotibe decided that paired, uh, a paired learning environment was the right thing for her class. She has a very large class and a small physical space, so she decided that pairing learners up instead of doing large groups was really effective because um, she would pair a, a stronger learner with a weaker learner and this really enabled um, them to, to chat with each other and provided a very relaxed learning environment. Um, for, for learners who might need a little bit of extra help from their stronger partner. Peer-to-peer -peer learning not only encourages the weaker learner, but also provides opportunities for the stronger learner to explain the concept to the weaker learner. The stronger learner deepens their understanding profoundly by explaining the new concept to somebody else. Uh, so how I control my big class, first and foremost is rules and um, consistency with those rules. If you can have rules, but if you're not consistent, uh, you might as well have nothing. So that's one of the things that I always emphasize whenever um, I get a, a new class, a uh, fresh year, fresh, fresh start. And um, another thing is um, knowing all their names. Uh, that's very important. I found that Ms. Ramotibe also really catered to different learning styles. So um, as we heard, there were visuals of of the 2D shapes and the 3D objects in the beginning of the lesson, but then learners were also given 3D objects that they could touch and feel. So this is a, a really wonderful way of catering to 